the property market going down, down, down. We always hear our cynics talking about it. Let's entertain it today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Morning Minutes. Myself, Michael Burjo, Mark Novak. What if yes. the property market goes down 10%? We're always hearing agents saying it's going up, it's going up. But let's address this fact. What if it goes down 10%? What are the repercussions for someone who's just bought and who's thinking to buy? I think, I think it's a valid conversation because a lot of people go, oh, I'm not going to buy. I'm, I'm, I think it's going to go down. Well, what does that mean to you and what does it mean not yeah. to buy? Good morning, Mark. Mark. Mark, it's too hot. You shouldn't buy now. It's too hot. It's going to go down. Like we're hearing it all our lives. Yeah, the bubble's going to burst. The bubble's going to burst. Um, and it, it's sometimes when you think about it, it's a, bit, it's a little bit like, well, what if? We all need somewhere to live. So even if property market crashes, you need a roof over your head and the principle Shelter. will be the same. You either rent it or you buy it um, and there's that balance. Obviously, we're not talking about a, a 50% crash and the economy fails, but there's dips in the market where it's it's hot and you see a 10% increase and then some people think when they see that, that means it's going to dip down. Um but I, I think you've always, got, you've always got your uncle that's like, you know, or your Debbie Downer, buddy, auntie, whatever, and they're always like, nah, this is, this is getting silly now. This is getting yeah. silly. Exactly. And I think the main thing, especially we've learned through COVID, is property is very resilient, especially when the sentiment is on the is all for buying property i think that's the biggest thing we can talk about there's always external influences um that can make the that make the prices go up and down like we discussed in 17 18 the royal commission there was still big can sentiment you up, can you zoom up a bit yeah there was yeah. big so big sentiment hey <laughs> <laughs> there was in 2017 18 like the sentiment was still strong, but it went down. No, because of all, all the financing regulations got quite tough. So I think sentiment's key. All roads, all roads lead to sentiment, and however, however you, it's a, look, it's a, it's it's probably not even measurable. I know they've got sentiment uh, levels that they measure in the market. What now? The hell you measure it? But all roads do lead to that. It's that makeup of how people feel after interest rates go up or down after property prices go up or down it's that sort of gut feeling you know business economy all that sort of stuff something that's that's happening at the moment which is pretty interesting is everyone has been talking about that cliff michael so everyone was saying oh yeah you know you wait you mm -hmm. wait until job keepers over or oh yeah, yeah you 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 wait till march and march and there was just these there was there was just consistently these these markers that people were, were negative markers that, that were approaching the people saying oh it's going to be the cliff it's going to be the cliff it's going to be the cliff uh where are those people that are making those call now uh and where is where is that cliff um now you know i, I looked at the other day um the the banks are talking about possibly extending um the the where they've frozen repayments for people um, and I, I believe uh, some information that I saw floating around was I think nine, only 10% of people have mortgage freezes at the moment in the marketplace. Uh, now, how much of that is out of desperation and how much of that is, uh, is out of how good is yeah. that? Yes. Um, you know, is uh, I'm thinking more desperation than how good is that? But you know, considering our, our world is in a uh, is in absolute turmoil over COVID. Um, I think Australians are, and considering um, China uh, in exports uh, to China from Australia have been turned off pretty hard. Domestically, we we looks like we're floating okay. Yeah, and I think it goes back to 
we've got to realize our property market is very strong. Like 50% of homeowners don't have a mortgage on the property for one. So it's got a really strong base. It's not like everyone has, has a loan on their property. Then we've had substantial growth in the last five years and prior to that very consistent over a long period of time so i was just thinking then in my head let's just say um your market go you, the market goes down and people a lot of people lose their jobs it all it depends what period when they bought is all relevant to them because someone who bought maybe two years ago comp compared to seven years ago just their like they've owned it for seven years so it's probably gone up 50 percent in value the more they've been paying their mortgage around, like this repayment would be very different to someone who just bought in the last couple of years. And like Northern Beaches, let's say for example, 6,000 properties sold out of 300,000. So even if all of all those homeowners struggled with a price dip, it's still not a big number compared to the whole area. So I think our spot exposure is very small. So when you talk about just because JobKeeper stops, I think we're very insulated with good foundation and there's not much exposure is what I'm trying to say. It's not like, I don't know, 90% of people bought in the peak of the market and any little fluctuation in interest and value and it throws off the system. More people owned before the property market went up than bought in new, you know, because everyone goes, oh, pro they're not consistent. Yeah, people should know that. People should know that um, when there's been historically over the last 50 to 100 years uh, corrections in the property market, we didn't really measure it well 50 to 100 years ago, but the last 50 years we've been pretty good at measuring. Uh, the, 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 a massive correction in the market it actually is not that massive. They And, you know, when it goes down, it's never really gone down much, ever. And you're talking war. Uh, you're talking recessions, you're talking global financial crisis, uh, you're talking pandemics. It's actually the market's never gone down that hard. Yeah, and I just want to go, oh, I shared the screen earlier, but let's talk the reality. Let's say you've just bought and the market, because we can talk speculation and all that, but what's it going to cost you? What Or what's the potential cost? Let's say you're looking to buy, you're worried about, you need to buy, you're renting, You've got your, your you've got your loan approved for say seven hundred thousand. You are worried the market's going to go down ten percent. Let's look at the worst case scenario: it goes down ten percent after you've bought. Now you'll be kick, you'll be kicking yourself because if you sell straight away, you're going to lose ten percent. But we all know properties are long term. You're not selling within five ten years. It's not when you buy; it's how long you're in the market for. But let's just take yep. a second and have a look at it. So if you bought, this is a mortgage calculator. You got a loan for, sorry, 550000 Westpac. Your mortgage, Happy Saturday morning, Batman and Robin. Yeah, thanks, Tony. <laughs> so you're buying at 550000 loan amount. Your payment would be 508. The market goes down 10% the next week. And if you had bought then, $460. So... For fifty dollars a week, fifty dollars a week is the true value or difference to you buying, like having the market go down ten percent because you're not selling. Now, for fifty dollars a week, you've still got those good tax benefits. You've still got your own property that you can work in. Like it's it's not the end of the world. But what what if you? Uh, yeah. You know what else, Michael? Your this is a holding cost for people. It's a holding cost whether you are owner-occupying, whether you are an investor, right? It's a holding. You also have a lodging roof over your head holding cost when you are renting. So yeah. what's to say that you're not going to be renting for $500 a week and your rent's going to go up to $550? <laughs> like, exactly right. You know, what's the, you know, that's not a financial, like, gloom, doom, like, the world's changing. I reckon the odds are a, a landlord touching you up for 10% of what you're paying over the, the world or the Australian property market touching you up for 10% of you're paying are two very different things. Well, Mark, if people stop buying who are going to move into their properties, they've got to rent. So the demand for owner-occupied purchases go down, market 10%. 
but the demand for rental properties goes up and the rental rates go up because there's more people looking to rent their property. Yep. Um, so I think that's it because I had a my I was at the barber shop the other day and he was like his mum was going to buy but now she thinks the market's going to go down so she's going to wait a year or two and it's like where I, you can have that view fine but if you're eventually going to buy in the market there's always ups and downs within a short period of time like one you're betting against the house you're betting against the sentiment of the Australian culture to buy property. And I think while that is still strong, I don't. I wouldn't bet against the house. There's obviously good times to buy. Maybe you buy just before Chrissy. You buy an Easter when less people are looking like you look at swings. We're seeing good, even good changes in a couple months' time. But the reality is, if we ask the client who was selling their property, um, who bought 30 years ago, regardless of the price, do you remember if you bought in a good time or bad time? Like if you bought 30 years ago and you bought at the peak. Do you really care? You, it's been 30 years. I think we focus too much. I think the it, simplify it when you got the loan, look for the property when you find the right property and you can afford it, buy it, and then head down, get on with the rest of your life. A lot of people try and be property, I don't know, property heroes when they're just. Bye, Jay. Bye. Hey, Jay. Bye, hey, Jay. Bye. Bye, Jay. <laughs> Have a nice day. <laughs> What do you reckon? Yeah. So I think people try and just overcomplicate it. Quick story. Yeah. Um, I was away and got finance approval uh, two years ago. Oh, last year. Oh, year before in January. And I was like, Lisa, and I'm like, shit, you know, market, you know, got to buy something. And I was like, you know what? Oh, I reckon it's a really good time to buy when everyone's not selling, when it, when everyone's, uh, you know, when because whoever's on the market in, you know, early, late December, early January is pretty motivated to sell. So I reckon we should buy one of those pretty motivated to sell properties. And Lisa goes, yeah, let's do it. And fortunately, we had the finance approval. It was sort of burning a bit of a hole in our pocket at the time, and it was an investment purchase. And I distinctly remembering I paid eight sixty for a two bedroom unit with lock up garage in Freshwater um, and it rented for, for like 550 or 600. It was a shock of rent. And I was like, you know, and Michael, you and I have run maths on uh, mm. the property market on, on at that time. In hindsight, it was a really shit time, um, you know, because I felt I, I definitely paid overs. When I looked at that, what I paid, it was like overs. Anyways, a year went past and I was like, I really paid overs. And a year and a half went past and I was like, yeah, I paid overs. And it just dawned on me like yesterday, I was like, shit, that's probably like a 900 unit now. Um, yeah. Look, like, like it, compared to what, you know, what, what people are making in properties, and, you know, it's, it's not. But I was like, man, that is, like, it's that suddenly look, looks like an unbelievable buy now. So point is, if you're buying at the top of the market, don't worry, um, time fixes all of that. And the other scenario is I probably would have put it to sleep. I yeah. probably wouldn't have got, my finance would have lapsed. I probably would have got two years later and said, now it's time and I'm paying 50 grand more. So yeah. you sort of, yeah, I, I just think you know. Yeah, you got to You uh, if that property market goes down, if you're banking on it going down, I don't know. Shit, like I think you got to have that long term view. Yeah, and like we said, you're not losing until you've sold it. Like things going down, yeah, it sucks for that feeling that your investment's gone down, but it can go back up just as quickly. It's playing that sort of long game through it, and with especially Sydney, New South Wales. With, we're always with big immigration, big growth, and property prices keep going up. And the government knows it's probably one of our biggest sectors. So it's not like it's going to fail anytime soon, especially when half the people who have properties have no loans. Like, I, th I think that's what, because if you think of America, the mortgage crisis, that was mortgage crisis, giving people loans to buy things they can't afford. When you think Australia, yep. half the people who have property, 
don't have loans, you're pretty stable. So, and then anyone- So guys, love, love it or hate it, love it or hate it, um, just get in there. Yeah, bye. All good, thanks everyone, cheers. So, thanks, Bird. Thanks, Tone. Thanks, everyone. Outro. Ah, there.